This time on Road and Race, I finish off fixing the small annoying issues with my Boxster. In the last video, I figured out why my electric seat didn't work, fixed the steering adjustment that's been stuck, and sorted out my two broken car keys. In this video, I'll be finishing off all the small annoying little things so that in the next video, I'll be able to tackle something a bit more serious. As you may have seen from my previous video where I got under the car and gave it a good inspection, this is the only rust that started to form on the bodywork anyway, which is really good. Here's what I'll be using. Drill with a wire brush to get rid of the rust, some crust to turn any remaining rust into usable metal, primer, top coat, and a bit of a 400 grit wet and dry just to sand it down in between coats. Then when we're done, lacquer. In this little area here where you can see top access is a bit tight. Uh, if I can't get in there with paint, I'll spray some uh, Lanoguard for uh, rust protection. There's the finished repair. Not absolute perfection, but a lot better than it was. Plus this area gets beat up quite a lot. So probably not looking terrible in the near future anyway. And essentially you'll never notice it because the wheel hides most of it anyway. So all in all, for a quick repair, I'm pretty happy. Now on to an issue that was noticed by one of you guys. Yeah, thanks for that. Like I don't have enough to do already. <laughs> but seriously, big thank you to poor J71, who said I should probably have a look at my power steering return hose. So let's go to the rear of the car and these are the power steering return hoses and as you can see here you can see how the kind of clamp is starting to split uh, apparently what happened was that that kind of lets go and then power steering pours out all over the place and then you have no assisted steering so what i'm going to do i'm going to get a little um, clamp and tighten it up and stop it getting any worse there we go, hopefully that'll hold it until I get round to uh, sorting out properly. A few videos back, you may remember, I cleaned out the water drain holes from the front of the car. This is the stop and getting blocked up and then water getting inside the car and then electronics breaking and stuff like that. Anyway, big thank you to Stingray Dave 9216 who pointed out I may have missed one or two. There are four drain holes, not two at the front. Another four drain holes here with the roof up and two with the rear spoiler lifted. So what Mr. Stingray had suggested was I get one of these. What's this? It's a trombone cleaner. Um, yeah, you um, basically insert this down the hole and uh, pushes all the debris and rubbish out. It's clever, isn't it? Um, so if that works, I'll be happy. And if it doesn't, I'll be very sad. <laughs> There's one of the drain holes buried right underneath the roof. I'm going to insert my uh, trombone cleaner and pull it out. And for those of you that are interested, the, the three of you probably, uh, that's the drain hole I cleaned last week. And the one I missed is just down here. And so it's the same on the other side. And there's a drain hole either side, just underneath the boot. Obviously it's got a little cover on it. So just need to check that it's unblocked up. It's a crack in the windscreen I'd like to repair. It's not enormous, it's right in your sight. You can see the steering wheel just here. So it's right in your line of sight, so it's very distracting. Here is the kit I'll be using. I'll put a link in the description box if you want to get one yourself. First up, we need to get the area nice and clean and grease free with this little alcohol pad. On dry, we need to stick this little sticky pad over the hole. And peel the other side of the sticky off. Let me fix the little kind of a template. Now it's time to put the resin inside. Pour in about three quarters. 
Now we need to suck all the air out, so we'll put in this syringe into here, and then pull up and lock it. We now need to wait 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes, so what we can do, we're just gonna pull the syringe out, and then we're gonna force air into the hole, and then lock it in its lowest position. It's been 20 minutes, so we can just take everything off now, take the syringe and this funnel off. Now, get your spare resin, just drop a little bead on top of the damaged area. And then a little piece of plastic over here, like so. Then use the razor just to flatten out any air bubbles that might be under here. This needs sunlight, ultraviolet light to cure, so I'm just gonna move the car outside. It needs about 15 minutes on a sunny day, about an hour if it's cloudy. It's been an hour outside now, so let's peel this back. Looks like it's dry now. Just need to get the razor blade now and scrape off any excess. It's started to rain, so I've moved the car back into the garage now. How is the result? Well, I was kind of expecting an absolutely seamless finish, and it's not that. It's still a fair amount of crack available. Um, I might give this another go. I'm not sure if it's my fault. Um, I tried to put the wheels back on the car and whatnot. It took quite a lot of time when I was moving outside. So I'm not sure if that affected it, but um, there we go. Now let's talk about license plates. Call me extremely particular and pedantic, but when I get a new car, I like to put new plates on it. I want nice, clean, simple plates. I don't want all the dealer marks, I don't want borders, I don't want flags. Nice and clean. Whilst the front plates are okay, there's a little bit of a Halfords logo here and something there which I don't like. It's okay. Here at the back, it's just a big no-no look. Flag sign, don't like that. And one cheeky dealer hasn't even made a new plate. He's just stuck a sticker over it. This is from the time that this car spent a couple of years abroad in Spain getting a tan. Uh, also, the dealer's been cheeky elsewhere. Have a look at this. Right here in the door jam, look. Stuck his own sticky label. So cheeky. Right, it's got to go. Ah, much better. And there they are. Aren't they great? Um, I got these from proplates.co.uk because um, they will allow you to do custom uh, designs. So these uh, completely plain plates, which is what I like. You just need to tell them when you check out in the little description box they give you. Um, they're also one of the cheapest license plate suppliers I was able to find in the UK, which is good. Uh, plus they can get them here quick as well, like one to two day delivery. So I think you probably want a license plate supplier really. That's all the small kind of items done with now, and there's still one or two things to do, but I'll get onto those at a later date. I'm keen to get on with something a bit more serious, a bit bigger now, now that parts have arrived. So in no particular order, I want to do a full service on the car, so it's changing all the fluids, auxiliary belts, spark plugs, all that kind of stuff, just get everything proactively done, but the Porsche major service, so to speak. Uh, after that, we got the coolant leak and the um, water pump to uh, replace potentially, if that's uh, something that's good to do proactively. I've uh, got to finish off doing all the brakes, still waiting on parts, but now they're in, I can get that all sorted out. And uh, I really want to change the clutch uh, and inspect the IMS bearing and the rear main seal. If there's anything you think I've missed off that list, anything you want to see me do to the car, let me know in the comments. I'm all ears. And um, as always, until next week, thanks for watching.